Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC, we do everything DIY and today we have a follow-up service call for a dual Hashizaki ice maker. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. Today we have a follow-up service call for this Hashizaki ice maker. We have one bin and two package units. We're going to be focusing on the unit on the left. In my last visit, I fixed a refrigerant leak. We got the system running and it was producing ice, but it wasn't dropping ice. Today, I'm here specifically to replace the float switch. And I'm gonna explain what happened and the symptoms of a bad float switch, which is gonna be key for the future. Both units are currently off. Let's just make sure. Oh yeah, I think it's full of ice. So there's a little bin switch inside here. Once it senses that it's pretty much 32 degrees with the ice, it says, hey, we're full. We don't need to run anymore. Hey, you want some ice? <laughs> oh my God. All right, man, we got this ice machine to the ceiling. So we're here to change the float switch. What happened here was pretty interesting. It was a little tricky, but then it makes sense once you look at the symptoms. Once we fixed the leak, all the evaporator coil was getting frozen, which we want. It wasn't doing that before because we, we lost about half the charge. Anyways, so we're like, okay, we see it forming ice. If you look inside here, so you can like physically see the ice being produced, it just wasn't dropping. So there's a timer on here. If you don't produce ice within 60 minutes, it goes into alarm and these alarms, you'll hear a beep and it, it beeps three times every couple seconds so we're like man what's going on here i noticed when it went into the ice cycle the pump and everything was working fine you see these tubes here you can kind of see the water going through it like right here you see it's right there so we had full flow after about 30 minutes i noticed we started to get air in these lines and i'm like man is there something going on with the pump because we weren't moving water anymore but what happened is that okay so when it first starts it goes into a fill cycle it drops water through this solenoid valve it allows water to pass through for 60 seconds this tank fills up that's the water that you need to produce ice so after about 30 minutes most of that water in the tank became ice so this didn't have uh, water to pump so that's why we started to get air in the line so the tank wasn't full of water thing is it should have dropped ice in that moment so we have this flow switch and basically what this does it it checks the amount of water in the tank so it starts off full right and the flow comes down why because that water has now turned into ice at that moment the switch should tell the system hey we're good we it's time we use that water became ice unless there's some other problem where the tank is leaking but let's just say everything's working the way it was it, the water level dropped and it says hey we need ice but what i found was this flow switch was stuck up so it kept trying to produce ice and the it pump kept trying to pump water even though there was no water in the tank and we already had ice so i pulled this apart cleaned it up and i got it to go so as you can see we made ice but i told them you know what if this thing's getting stuck not only do we do need to do maintenance because you need to descale the, the internal uh parts of this machine you got to descale the water system right inside the pipes and all that stuff because once it gets scaled up it starts to stick i cleaned it up it did its job but i just don't trust it anymore so ever since i cleaned it up the flow goes up and down according to the water level in the tank and the system was working i just really don't trust it so i quoted them a new float switch they went ahead with it and i'm going to show you how to replace that it seems simple enough a couple tubes two screws right but be careful because you pull this apart you're going to flood this place so right here the missing control panel cover anyways this switch to the left makes ice to the right goes in wash mode but in the middle it's off right here is the connection from the tank going into the pump 
you pull this apart, the water tank is gonna drain in there. So I got a clean bag in there. And what I'm gonna do is set that up, whoops, to drain into the bag. We're draining the tank. Now that we're fully drained, we are ready to begin. Power off, water drain. You don't gotta worry about water coming in. You don't gotta cut it off. It's feeding this unit as well. This solenoid here. This is your water valve, water inlet valve. It's basically a solenoid valve. It is closed when you're not applying power. So this is a critical thing because not only will it want to make ice, this pump right here if you look at just to buy it for yourself this thing is close to a thousand dollars so you don't want to be pushing air through this pump and it's going to burn out and you know what it has burned out before so to make things a little easier take out this take this out and then this piece right here careful not to mess that up you're going to pull it out connects to that piece in the back okay little cup yeah looks like it got a little bit more dirt already since the last visit this thing is getting dirty man it's time for a cleaning hear that i'll show you guys how it is when i take it off but it's moving it was stuck up before and i'm going to show you some literature from the manufacturer uh to the code that we had the three beat alarm and it gives you a little bit of tips. All right, the float switch has one like little plug-in. Let's see, there's a tie wrap there, but basically we're gonna follow, oh yeah, I gotta cut these out. Basically we're gonna follow this to our control board. And I'm pretty sure it's this one. Yeah, uh, this is K5 on the board. So pretty much we're gonna snake this wire out the way that it's coming in. And we're gonna connect that flow switch to K5 on the board. All right, just gonna be careful when you cut that, you don't wanna cut into the hose. I got some more cable ties, tie wraps, whatever you wanna call them. Let's just neatly, wow, this thing doesn't wanna break off just neatly trace this wire Got another one going through here okay where does this guy go right here okay five right so pulling out and this thing don't want to come out of here there's also a cover up top here we have some electrical connections in here. Does it even go through there? Oh wow, it actually doesn't. Oh well. Still give us a little bit more access. Right here. I'm gonna fish this wire out. It's a bit tight to be honest with you. To get this thing out of here. They don't wanna damage it you know going through this piece forget about the old one but you don't want to damage the new one and look <laughs> the connector came off man uh, whatever we're here for a new one anyways so there we go we got the wire okay don't worry about that we got a new one Cool. Now over here we have two screws. As you can see, I, I marked this one. You want to make sure you put it in the same spot because if you adjust the level, now you're playing with the runtime. 
because it's gonna sense water differently. Hopefully you guys got a good view. I set this thing to super view, which my other camera didn't have, which should allow a super view, right? A better view. I see the comments, sometimes it's hard to get the adjustment right because I can't see it. I'm wearing a camera on my head. So we just got two simple screws here. I gotta pull this back. Pull the flow switch back while I unscrew it so you could actually come out of there. Okay? And this simple control right here can cause a lot of problems. So right here, this is the float. All right? Water levels up, float is up. Water levels down, saying we made ice, it's down as well, all right? Make sure, you keep, make sure there's a bar there as well. Keep that thing safe. There's just a little cover that goes underneath. And this tube goes into there, where that's, this is inside there is the water tank, so that's where it's reading the water level. For reference, let's check this using continuity. So I have my meter set to continuity, it reads resistance and reads continuity at the same time. If we hear a beep, we have continuity, meaning the wires are touching. I'm gonna test it out quick. Got continuity. Right now, the float switch is down. And let's see what we got. Oh, let me get this right. Right now, the float switch is down and we have open line and no continuity. Let's flip this thing the other way so hopefully it stays. So the float switch technically is up even though it's upside down. All right. Right there we got 0.7 ohms and we have continuity. So when the float switch is up, you have continuity saying, hey, we need ice. Float switch comes down, breaks the circuit, we lose the continuity, and that tells the board to go into the next mold to now drop this ice. Since it reverses some refrigerant flow to the evaporator where it sends hot gas through the evaporator to help melt it down while water's pushing down as well. And you know, that's, that's a whole different thing, but that's how you, you would check it with no power applied here's the brand new flow switch assembly you can run that same check to make sure if your system is is good before you install it and go through this crazy mess because that would just be unfortunate real talk so flow switch down no continuity ay 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 float switch up Let's try to get this yep float switch so we got continuity so it's doing its job let's get this thing in place this is a much heavy this is a much heavier duty wire i can see this is an original hajas docky part it's more expensive but you're paying for quality a lot of these aftermarket parts honestly don't hold up gonna clean this boot make sure everything is nice before we put in that new control always do things neat guys from my experience it's easier to put this boot on first before you push it in because it's too tight unless you're trying to take out that uh that pump and i am not trying to do that so i'll kind of like get it in place and push the back end from here okay now we're just gonna get the two screws in i mean it's, it's extremely simple but it's important you do this right and get the level where it should be because there's a lot of range here and you could adjust it i know this level works so i am playing all games and trying to mess around okay so we're gonna get it to the same level and that's how we know we're gonna be good. Yeah, these little float switches can cause a lot of problems. So, a couple things to take note of, right? And this holds, you can get onto here. 
make sure it's on there well. There we go. And this one can go here. And sometimes I actually see a spring going through here. Just make sure that the line doesn't kink. And as far as this wire, we're just gonna run it up neatly and connect it to the K5 terminal on our control board. There you have it guys. I don't know why there's no like internal part to run this wire. I really dislike this, but it is what it is. Put the tie wraps back and we are connected to K5. And that's a beautiful thing right there. You're gonna wanna make sure that boot is on and this is good. So because it's full of ice, it's not gonna make ice. Even though I shifted it to ice mode, it's because the bin switch inside there, it's sitting in ice. So it's telling me that it's telling the machine, hey, we're full, we don't need ice. So what I could do is, so I wanna see it fill up. I can get a glove, but I can scoop some ice out of it and hold it with my hand. I'm about 97 degrees. And that should get the system at least to fill up the tank with water. I wanna see it naturally and make sure we have no leaks. Sensor over there is buried. Let's scoop some of that out of here. Okay. And grab it with my hand. Warm it up. And it's gonna think, hey, we need ice again, even though we're full. Let's see if I could do it. Just gonna put my hand on it. With the glove. Oh, I heard a beep. Oh, I see a light. Right there, look, it's filling up with water. Keep my hand on it, make sure it goes through the whole cycle. And like that, I'm gonna make sure that the system doesn't have any leaks. Let's go. All right, compressor started. Going in, it starts off in the red that deep for a second, but we're full of water, everything is good. I'm gonna wait for it to go into ice so I can see it as well with water pressure with the pump. But we should be good here. But you just really want to make sure you don't have any leaks because the last thing you want as a tech is a call back. There you go, pump is running, no air in the lines. But we got no leaks. That's it. My job here is done. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe to come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.